Good morning. Welcome to today's daily office. I'm excited for an opportunity to share a little bit of God's word with you. Uh, glad that we can be together, albeit virtually, this morning. Today for our scripture passage, we're going to be going to Exodus 34. A wonderful passage, one of my favorites in the whole Bible. A passage uh, in which God himself tells us um, how we are to praise him. Gives us the words to say when we don't know how to approach God. Um, and he does it in the context of approaching us in love and grace. So Exodus, Exodus 34 is a really cool passage, and it finds itself in uh, what might be one of the most dramatic moments in all of the Bible. Uh, it's right after the Israelites have um, sinned against God by making a golden calf when Moses went up on the mountain, uh, Mount Sinai, to receive the law. He was gone for a while, and the people got nervous. And so, if you remember, what did they do? They created a golden calf. They, they gave Aaron all of their gold. And uh, Aaron supposedly just put the gold in the fire, and out came a golden calf. That's at least how Aaron tells the story. And the, uh, the result is that they, they uh, worship an idol, and they act in sinful ways. And so Moses comes down from Mount Sinai, and he's got the Ten Commandments, and he sees them sinning. And in anger, he breaks the Ten Commandments, and um, the, the people are, uh, they're, they're, they're put far from God by their actions. And so there's real danger here. God is angered by their sin in Exodus 31, 32, and 33. And the Lord says that he's going, to, um, he's, he's, he's going to remove the people and make a people out of Moses. He's so angry with the Israelites that he is, has decided um, to, to set them aside. But Moses intercedes for them. He, he pleads to the Lord and he, he asks that he might be accursed for their sake. And so God promises that he will bring Moses to himself and make a new covenant again with these people uh, because of Moses' intercession for them. So God tells Moses in Exodus 33 to make two new tablets and to head up the mountain because God's going to again write the Ten Commandments, the stipulations of the covenant, and he's going to um, show Moses his face. So there's this anticipation at the end of Exodus chapter 33 that Moses is going to go up the mountain and God's going to show him uh, his, his person, his name. And then you get to Exodus 34, which uh, is when God does that. So let's read from Exodus 34 about God revealing his name, his nature to Moses and um, reaffirming the covenant he has with the people of Israel. So I'm going to read from Exodus 34. We're going to read verses 1 through 9 together. The Lord said to Moses, Cut for yourself two tablets of stone like the first, and I will write on the tablets the word that were on the first tablets, which you broke. Be ready by the morning, and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you, and let no one be seen through all the mountain. Let no flocks or herds graze opposite that mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the first, and he rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. 
And Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If I now have found favor in your sight, O Lord, please let the Lord go in the midst of us, for it is a stiff-necked people. And pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. So there is here in Exodus 34 this beautiful description of the Lord. That God himself gives us words by which we are to praise him. See, these words in verses 6 through 7 are, are words that have become kind of the, the basic definition of the God of Israel. You see these lines repeated throughout the Old Testament. That when they're trying to distinguish the Lord from all other gods and powers, they use these words. They use this, these, this phrase, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. And so what I would encourage you today as you read these words is read them as a means by which you can draw near to God. When the people of Israel were in danger of being forsaken by God, God drew near to them. And he revealed himself to them in this beautiful way. As you read these descriptors of God, read them in the context that God is drawing near to you. And so as you read them, you can draw near to him. Take some time and read slowly what it means and think what it means for the Lord to be merciful and gracious. What it means for the Lord to be slow to anger. What it means for the Lord to be abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. And you'll find for yourself a sense of peace. And a sense of closeness with the real, true, living God, as you do. Because when we read his word, it is as the, the Lord, though the Lord is revealing his name to us, as he did to Moses. And he is promising to be near to us and to love us to the thousandth generation. And that is a God worth praising. So my encouragement for you today is to Take these words in Exodus 34, by them draw near to God, and you'll find how to praise him. Well, with that, brothers and sisters, let's pray. Let's pray together for um, all of the things that are going on in our world, and let's praise God for how he has been gracious and kind to us, how he has been abounding in steadfast love. I think as Doug has said here, we should praise God for Ann Tomei's healing and um, for her new employment. That is something for which we should praise God. That is an example of his faithfulness to us. But I encourage you, write some prayer requests down. Let's pray together. Let's praise God and go to him, yeah, trusting that as we draw near to him, he draws near to us too in faithfulness and love. So as you write some prayer requests down, I'll pray for us. Heavenly Father, I pray praising you for who you are. Lord, you are merciful and gracious. Lord, you are slow to anger. Lord, you abound in steadfast love and faithfulness. Lord, there, there is no end to your steadfast love for those who put their trust in you. Lord, by your faithfulness and love, you break every chain of sin. Lord, every oppression which plagues us. And you have proven this by sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, and that was out of your abundant love 
for us in your abundant mercy. So we praise you for that this morning, Lord, and we rest in that steadfast love. We rest, Lord, in your patience and forbearance. Lord, we rest in the fact that you are slow to anger. Lord, that people will can sin and turn against you, Lord, and you will um, seek them. Lord, you will seek to bring them back. Lord, and you will seek to renew the covenant with them, like you did with your people, Israel. Lord, even though they were a stiff-necked people, you sought them out, and you renewed your covenant with them through Moses. And so we praise you this morning, Lord, and we ask that you would continue to be as you are to us. We trust you, Lord, that what these what this passage in Exodus says about you is true. And so, Lord, even in our world where we do not experience many... Um, well, we experience lots of hard things, Lord, and when it might seem hard to uh, understand your faithfulness, I pray you would remind us of these words. I pray that you would give us, Lord, a longer vision and that you would remind us of the cross of Jesus Christ, which is the clearest display of your faithfulness to us. Lord, I pray that you would be gracious and would remember these prayers of your people. We praise you this morning, Lord, rem that you have remembered the prayers of your people for Aunt Tome. I am so thankful, Lord, that she has uh, received significant progress, Lord, uh, with her, her illness, and Lord, you have healed her substantially. Lord, for so long your people prayed for this. Lord, and Anne suffered faithfully for a long time. I am just thankful, Lord, that you have brought this healing into her life and also this new opportunity in Florida for them. I pray you would bless them wherever they go. I pray, Lord, that you would be gracious to them and that, Father, wherever they go, they would have a remembrance of their family uh, that loves them in Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you would bless our world in these times of crisis. Lord, that you would equip us to be a blessing, that we might remember your word and we might act according to who you are. Lord, as we read these attributes of you, would we as well be merciful and gracious, slow to anger. Lord, would you give us the strength to abound in steadfast love and faithfulness. We need your strength for this today. We are not um, able on our own strength, Lord, to be as you are. We need Jesus to come and to fill us with the Holy Spirit that we might walk according to that Holy Spirit and be like you, Father. So we ask for that Holy Spirit to come and to fill us now as we go about our days. Uh, for Jesus' sake, amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, the Lord bless you today. May you experience his steadfast love and faithfulness as you go about your day. Mm -hmm.